Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunderous Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. So glad you could join me because on today's episode folks, we're going to talk about waders and uh, help you if you're, uh, if you're trying to buy some waders and you're not sure which kind to buy, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of different waders and maybe help you make a better decision. So first of all, there's, there's two basic styles. There's a stocking foot style or there's a barefoot style. Now the stocking foot is exactly that it comes with a stocking on the foot. So you put the waders on, but then you need to put a separate boot on. So the waders come in one piece, and then you have to go buy a separate pair of boots, of wading boots, uh, to, to wear with those um, nylon, or with those stocking style uh, waders. Now, some of the advantages of that style, which by the way, that's one of the most popular styles, is that they're very lightweight, they travel very well. The stocking foot style, it's very lightweight, it folds up really small and, and travels very well and then you could also pick the boots that you want. You could pick any style boot that you like and typically the boots are very comfortable. So you've got yourself a good comfortable boot um, along with the stocking foot wader and from there folks you could, you could hike, you could walk around, you can portage, you're very mobile. And as far as packing goes in the luggage, very, very lightweight and they pack very well. So that's why the stocking foot style is one of the most, I'm going to say one of the most popular styles. And they're also uh, not that expensive. Now the barefoot style, that's actually the style that I'm using today. They come with a boot already molded in part of the wader. So you don't have any decision to make. Just find one that fits your foot and you've got yourself uh, a pair of waders. So, some of the disadvantages, well, they are bulkier because uh, just because of the nature of the of the wader, and you don't have a selection more or less on the boot that you're going to wear. So there's the pros and cons more or less. Uh, the, on the plus side, you don't have to make any decision on buying any boots, so you're not traveling with two separate pieces. You're traveling with one set of waders, and your decision on the boots is already made for you. So that's come some of the advantages. So once you've decided on the style, barefoot or stocking, the next thing you need to determine is do you want hip waders or do you want chest waders? Well, uh, and there's also waders that come to the waist, but the most popular are hip waders or chest waders. Now hip waders are least expensive because there's less material, and of course they only go up to the hip. So the chest waders are a little more money and they go up to the chest. So it depends how deep you're going to be fishing. If you're going to be fishing deeper water, then by all means the chest waders would be better. However, if you're going to be fishing just shallower water and just need to walk around in two or three feet, then the, um, then the uh, hip waders are, are plenty. They're plenty. So once you've made the decision, stocking foot or barefoot, hip wader or chest wader, now you need to determine material. So. As far as material goes, neoprene is one of the original, uh, still very popular. The thing with neoprene is some of the advantages are they keep you very warm. So um, you could fish very cold water. They're nicely insulated and they come in different thicknesses. They come in two, three, five, I think up to seven mil is the thickest. So you can get yourself a really well insulated pair of neoprene waders. Um, on the negative side, they're very, very heavy. They're very, very hot. So because they're insulated, I'm fishing on a hot day today and I'm sweating already, I can't imagine wearing a pair of neoprene waders on a day like today. Just can't imagine it. So that's the disadvantage is bulky, heavy, they don't travel well, and they're hot in the summer. So I guess if you're only fishing cold water and you don't mind the extra bulk, then neoprene is the way to go. Otherwise, uh, you're looking at more of a nylon or a breathable kind of fabric, like a Gore-Tex, folks. A Gore-Tex is probably one of the best. Uh, be a lot more expensive than the nylon, but the nylon are good as well. And uh, some of the advantages of that style are that they are very lightweight, and they travel well, and you could still, you could still uh, dress for warmer weather because all you have to do folks is just layer up on the inside so put an extra pair of sweatpants underneath or a pair of long johns and just insulate yourself and make your own layers of insulation so now you can fish them in the summer as is or you can fish them in the winter by adding some extra layers so keep that in mind when you 
when you're looking for a size as well. You want one a little bit bigger that will accommodate some extra clothing underneath. So those are some of the basics, folks, and some of the choices that you have out there when it comes to waders. And waders aren't just for trout anglers or salmon anglers. They're for all anglers. Uh, today I'm throwing a spinner a little bit for some, for some smallmouth. And um, if you're fishing for any species of fish, the waders allow the boatless angler an opportunity to, to make your way out. Oh, there's one there. They allow you the opportunity to make your way out into shallower water, or into deeper water, I should say. That's a nice bass. He's going right between my legs. And, uh, and, it, and it allows you to fish water that you wouldn't normally be able to fish. I mean, I couldn't even cast this far from shore, let alone standing out here and casting out further. So waders give the boatless angler a huge, huge advantage, folks, huge advantage, allowing you to fish water that you couldn't normally get to, and also, also allowing you to navigate to water that you couldn't normally get to. So, there we go, I got myself a nice, a nice smallie there, folks. I decided to snap on the size three sting eye spinner and uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take my pliers out we're gonna release this fish and get him right back from where he came but I hope those tips on waders have helped you folks if you're a boatless angler they really are a huge advantage they give you a, a an opportunity to fish water you wouldn't be able to normally fish and look at on a day like today I'm staying nice and cool sweating a bit but a lot cooler out here than it would be on shore I want to thank you ever so much for tuning in to today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. And as always, folks, until next time, good luck and good fishing. Okay, let's get this guy off and back in the water.